I wanted to play around with the subharmonicon. There's two different ways I've been using it, primarily as a standalone where I'm using the sequencer inside of the subharmonicon and syncing it to my DAW. The other way I've been using it is as a standalone hardware synth, just as I would my Mini Moog or my Behringer Odyssey or anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the subharmonicon synced up to Ableton Live. I just have a silly little drum beat, just something to keep a time, and I just wanted to give everyone a quick idea. I've heard a few people say when they turn the subharmonicon off and turn it back on, they're not getting the same sound. I think I might know why that is, uh, why that's happening to them. Let me, I'll just tell you real quick, just before I do anything else. If you start a sequence in the subharmonicon and you hit the reset button, watch, see how sequence, sequencer one, or pattern one and pattern two, watch. When I, when I hit reset, see how both lights have gone to one? Now if I hit play, it's going to go through whatever it's, whatever it's going to do. Um, you know, if if I have the, the sequences in an odd timing, yeah, they're going to go out of step, but over time it's going to get back to what you had. Um, whereas if you started and your sequences were in different places and then you turned, you went to your DAW or whatever, you start trying to sync things up, then I think you may begin to have problems. And I could be off on that, but from what I've observed thus far, that's been a solution for me. Um, I'll turn it off and turn it back on and give you guys an idea. Let's see if it does the same thing as it's doing to you. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully, you know, we solve this together and uh, have more fun with the machine. All right, so the first thing again I'm going to do, I just have this simple, simple sequence set up in a subharmonicon. I have it synced up to Ableton Live. Okay, here's Ableton here. Okay, all right, let's hit play. Let me just go ahead and turn the machine off and turn it back on and let's see if we get the same sequence back. Let's do that. Putting them both on reset so that they're both starting on one. Then I'll hit play. Okay, whatever. Uh, let me unplug it and I'll plug it back in. I'm going to go ahead and just tune it up and get it set up as a hardware synth. So first things first, I've, um, I've routed everything through Ableton Live. Uh, here's my audio for my subharmonicon, and I have my MIDI on a separate track. You can do this in Ableton where audio and MIDI go on the same thing, but then it only records the MIDI. Sometimes I want to record audio, sometimes I want to do MIDI, so I have them set on different tracks. Let's just go here. <laughs> All right, and what I do on my subharmonicon and all my hardware, really, I, I, I insert a tuner. All right, and I'm just going to lower, so let's go back over to subharmonicon. I'm just going to lower, uh, there we go, okay. Uh, I'm just going to lower each of the um, sub-oscillators, and I'm only going to listen to oscillator one, the main oscillator for now. 
All right. I'm going to hit reset so they're both on step one. And you can do whatever you want, but I'm just, I mean, you could leave whatever tuning or, or change or whatever you want, but here we go. So on my MIDI controller, all right, and there we go, run A. I'm going to turn up oscillator two. A, A, okay. And now I'm just going to turn up my sub oscillators and tune them as well. All right, so see now we're in A. I'm playing A, okay. All right, I'm just going to, I'm literally just going to step in something ridiculous just so I have something, okay. So that was a quick demonstration just on how you can use the Subharmonicon as a standalone device, syncing it up to your DAW, then also tune up the oscillators and uh, use it as a standalone synth. I just, as you see, I just inserted a MIDI track and boom, there we go.